Okay, so far we are discussing that these dermal tissues give protection to the plant or the tree. What kind of protection they are giving? So they are covering the inner parts or the inner tissues by not allowing any foreign particles, organisms, bacteria or pathogens into the plant body. So they are preventing the entry of all the foreign bodies or organisms into the plant. So they are the protective covering of the plant parts. That is the major one and the, it protects the plant from loss of water because the plant tissues they have so much of water that is supplied through the vascular system. So if it is not covered properly the water will be lost into the atmosphere by the process of transpiration or evaporation or whatever so different processes. So that is regulated by this dermal tissues and moreover these dermal tissues by having certain features like stomata or root heads they help in the process of exchange of water or exchange of gases. So this is all about the dermal tissues. Now we go to the third type of tissue the ground tissues. Okay so now we are talking about the ground tissues of plants. So the ground tissues they form the bulk of the plant that means they give the shape they give the support they form the main base of their pulp. So these are the ground tissues and the ground tissues they involve in the function of support and at the same time storage of food. Certain ground tissues they help in the process of photosynthesis and so on. Now let us see how the ground tissues are divided. There are mainly three types here we have ground tissue that is the parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. If you observe the parenchyma tissue, the parenchyma cells are thin walled and loosely packed there are so many air spaces between them we can observe. So these parenchyma cells are soft in nature and they are loosely packed with air spaces. Parenchyma cells that are present in the leaf surface they contain chloroplast. So the photosynthesis takes place in this parenchymatic cells which contain the chloroplast. So such parenchyma is called as Chlorenchyma. The parenchyma that contain the chloroplast and participate in the process of photosynthesis. So that is called as chlorenchyma, parenchyma with chloroplast. If the parenchyma tissue is having air spaces, so if it has got air spaces, you call it as airenchyma. The parenchyma tissue with air spaces is called as Airenchyma and some of the parenchyma tissue it participates in the storage function. It stores the food material. If you see the potato, in that we find the food, the starch is stored in the parenchyma tissue. So, storage tissue, the parenchyma that stores the food material is called as storage tissue. The parenchyma that consists of the chloroplast, it is called chlorenchyma, and the parenchyma that has air spaces is called as airenchyma. So this is about the parenchyma. Now let us come to the cholenchyma, second type of cells. The cholenchymatic cells, they have a bit of thick wall and more elongated cells compared to the parenchyma tissue. So the next one, sclerenchyma. Sclerenchymatic cells, they have very thick walls and they are very compactly packed. There is no air space or gap between them. Basically, they form the hard wood of a plant. So in trees, if you cut the trunk, we find that hard wood at the center. The wood is very hard. So if you see the other parts like flowers or fruits or leaves, they are soft. You can press them, you can compress them. That means there are some air spaces and they are made up of soft tissues. But sclerenchyma, they are the hard tissues. Here the cell walls are very thick and there are no air spaces between them. So it is hard to press. So this is the sclerenchyma. These are the these three the parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma together form the ground tissues of the plant. So next we move to the vascular tissues. Okay now we are going to study about the fourth type of plant tissue that is vascular tissue. Right, so we studied about the meristematic tissue, 
and the ground tissue and the epidermal tissue. So now vascular tissue. What is the importance of vascular tissue in plants? In plants, the vascular tissue plays a major role in transportation of materials. So plants have got different parts and they need materials to be distributed among the different parts of the plant. Plant needs water and minerals. So the root of the plant absorbs the water and minerals from the soil. This water and minerals are to be carried to different parts. Say the water is needed in the leaf that is for the process of photosynthesis. So the water is to be transported from root to the leaf. So this transportation takes place through special tissues called as vascular tissues. In the same way, the food is prepared in the leaf that is by the process of photosynthesis. So this food, the food which is prepared in the form of glucose, it is to be uh, converted to starch and to be stored in different parts. So the food is stored in the plants in the form of starch. So this starch has to be sent to some other places where it can be stored properly. So that transportation of food from the place of production to the place of storage. So that also requires some special tissues to do the to carry out the process. So that is the vascular tissue. So vascular tissues, they help in the conduction of water, minerals and other nutrients from one part of the plant to other part of the plant. The vascular tissues are categorized into two. One is xylem tissue and the second one is phloem tissue. Xylem tissue and phloem tissue. So in this, the xylem tissue, it mostly take part in the conduction of water and mineral salts. That is to supply the water and mineral salts to different parts. Whereas the phloem tissue, it plays a crucial role in transportation of the food material that is prepared in the leaves. So the food material is supplied or distributed or taken to the place of storage by this phloem tissue. So the xylem tissue and phloem tissue. They are composed of different types of cells. Xylem is composed of vessels, tracheids, and fibers. In the same way, the phloem tissue is also made up of sieve tubes, sieve cells and fibers etc and they also contain parenchyma cells also parenchyma now let us see the shapes of those cells which make up this xylem and phloem the xylem tissue it has got vessels vessels and elongated cells called as tracheids tracheids and fibers. In the same way, phloem. Phloem is also having companion cells. These are the companion cells. Companion cells and they have sieve cells and sieve tubes sieve tubes so
So, these are the different types of cells and uh, along with this they have parenchyma cells also in them. So, these two tissues they play an important role in the conduction of water and mineral salts. So, the xylem it conducts the water and minerals up to a very great height. Some of the plants are in 100 feet or 150 feet. So, a long giant sequoia tree, giant redwood tree. So, 250 feet, 350 feet, 300 feet. So, up to that height, the water is to be transported or carried from the ground. So, they don't have any uh, specific system like animals. In case of animals, you see that they have got special circulatory system, they have got a heart which pumps the blood to be circulated. But in plant, there is no such specific system like uh, heart or something, no special organ to pump the water. So, but here, this vascular system on basing some physical and biological principles uh, uh, of uh, water and so, the water is, will be carried or conducted to great heights by this xylem and phloem. So, that forces, whatever the forces that drive the water from ground to that much height through these xylem vessels that we are going to learn in higher classes. So, what are the adhesive and cohesive forces which help the water to pass from uh, ground level to that heights. But here, these tissues, they play a major role in conducting water, minerals and nutrients from one part to other part.